Okay, my friends, so we have new science here, new physics, new everything. And if you haven't been keeping an eye on the weather conditions, this is the middle of July 2022. They claim that what's happening now, they couldn't have forecasted this could have possibly happened until 2050. Well, I don't think it's going to slow down a whole lot. It might. We might get a reprieve, but I'm not 100% hopeful of that. Now, let me show you why and why physics, the new physics, explains this quite clearly. And if there is anything we can do. And it's very questionable at this moment. Red Bank, New Jersey, a hospital racing to relocate some patients after the air conditioning in the emergency room failed for a time. Officials say all are safe. Experts say climate change has made rare heat waves three to five degrees warmer in much of the U.S., and it's at least double the likelihood of record-breaking hot summer days. The heat alerts now stretching from coast to coast, with most of Texas still over 100 degrees, fueling multiple fires. And officials say so far the state's power grid is holding. But for millions in the plains, no sign of relief anytime soon. And David, here in New York, Con Edison is actually sending out text message alerts trying to convince people to limit their energy use to try to prevent any possible outages. They also say that they're mobilizing more resources to respond to possible problems with this heat wave expected to last possibly in the next week. David? Yeah, that's the incredible thing. We just are leading us off with thank you. Let's get right to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. And Rob, we were talking about this before. We just mentioned it again. Three days above 90 degrees for a heat wave. And in several major cities, including here in New York City, you believe this could be six to seven days of this? Yeah, the last time we did this was about a decade ago, and I think the major cities in the Northeast will see this sort of stretch. But the heat is only expanding across much of the country through the heartland and through the southern plains. They've had a really bad, and that continues. Warnings are up there. Oklahoma, you haven't had it, seen this sort of heat as a state ever. Dallas, Austin, you set records again uh, today, and the warnings remain up through Memphis and in through uh, southern Indiana. And on the corners, the southwest remains hot. And across the Northeast, the I-95 corridor, we spoke about this, the next three days are looking like this mid-90s, Hartford, mid to upper 90s in Boston, nearing 100 degrees in Philadelphia. We do have a front that's spawning severe weather across Ohio. This is a weak front, and it will impact places like Atlanta and Charlotte tomorrow with strong winds and isolated tornado flash flooding and the New England area. But this is not going to cool us off all that much. This extended stretch of hot weather will continue into next week. And yes, it is amplified by climate change. David, probably know you and Ginger will stay on this for us right through this stretch. Thank you. And we also continue to watch the heat emergency overseas. That searing heat and the persisting wildfire danger across southern Europe tonight. Spain battling fires in five regions as the National Weather Service there is now forecasting even higher temperatures on the way for Spain. In Greece tonight, residents stepping in to battle the flames in Athens. Nearly 100,000 people forced to flee their homes for some time now. While in London tonight, the mayor there now says those fires are contained that we reported on last night here, but more firefighters battling them than any time since World War II. Back here in this country, President Biden addressing climate change today. And as we have reported here, the president's efforts to pass legislation have been shot down at least temporarily by Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. Well, the president in Massachusetts today, where he called climate change a clear and present danger. As president, I have a responsibility to act with urgency and resolve when our nation faces clear and present danger. Speak to That's me. what climate change is about. It is literally, not figuratively, a clear and present danger. The president then went, to went on to list some things he could do. Terry Moran with us from Washington, but Terry, the bottom line, uh, with enough votes in the Senate, particularly from Senator Manchin, uh, because it's 50-50, what can the president do on his own? Speak to me. Not much, David, especially given the scale of the climate challenge. But as you say, the president did announce some smaller unilateral initiatives. Just this is all nonsense. Uh, to make infrastructure more resilient in those communities most affected by climate change. Uh, help low-income Americans with their cooling and air conditioning expenses. And open up areas in the Gulf of Mexico for offshore wind power. But all that really is minuscule compared with the challenge a national free challenge. energy free energy okay i know i've shown this a million times and i'm going to show it another million times until it's it's recognized and discussed fermi lab and cern they see these particles we found those particles 
They say they will create tons of energy. I agree. We separated them, cause fission, we cause fusion. This is what should be able to be harvested. Huge amounts of energy. Very simple, and you have to understand electron flood theory to understand how these particles separate and why so much energy is produced. And this is the solution to our answer, to our problems. Now to hear the president get up there and say, this is our emergency, this is our, everybody's screaming, it's an emergency. Not a single one of these people that are in control will discuss this with me, and I believe I have the answers. I may not, but they spend millions of dollars a day. I need a couple of thousand dollars and a couple of engineers to just see, can we create more energy here than we started with here? If we can, we're off to the races. If not, I go home and I say I'm an idiot. Simple as that. Now let's get it down to science here. Okay, so now they have found a disturbing shift has affected Earth's delicate energy balance, scientists report. This is just a couple days ago. And this is from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. And they're talking about how we absorb and re-radiate energy from the sun. And frankly, they don't understand it. So we're never going to get anywhere with this climate change. Okay, this is what top climatologists believe. The sun puts out particles. Yes, absolutely, 100%. They say, no, they're not particles, they're waves. Well, they are particles. And those particles smash into the particles that surround us. It's called our atmosphere. And out at the very edge of our atmosphere out here, where that interaction occurs, because the Earth is spinning, and where we scrub our glued on atmosphere to what's coming at us from space and what we're plowing through that region right there is 2700 degrees not only that we don't radiate back into space we drag our particles back into our earth due to our magnetic field because these are nothing more than magnetic particles let me show you what the particles are and then i will explain to you what happens at our surface at our, the edge of our atmosphere, and then we'll see what they have to say. All right, I have shown in extreme detail, this is the light particles that are nothing more than photons. That is a photon. Photons come from the sun. They come from every radiant source. Fermi Lab and CERN agree. I've shown you that, well, maybe I didn't, maybe I did, but look it up. What's the point? by Don Lincoln in 2013. He shows these particles, the ones that we found. And he also has another one called quantum foam. Same time, says these particles fill space. All right. Now, what do these particles do when they scrub at the edge of our atmosphere? Well, let's see. The first thing you have to understand is these particles do not come back to the sun. They leave and go out on their way to illuminate other sources. This is an, a, a solar eclipse and we can see the interactions, the pole of the Sun spinning this way. These fields are created by the extreme interaction of it spinning this way and moving that way at the same time, scrubbing and creating a huge magnetic bubble here which forces another bubble here which forces another bubble here. These just trail off but we have to plow through that stuff. Now, this is us going through being ripped to on the arm of the Milky Way. The sun is concussing with whatever's in front of it. That's why we have good days and we have bad days. Geomagnetic storms means it's hitting something denser in front of it than the day before. We have to plow through whatever it sloughs off. You see all that stuff sloughing off the side? We have to plow through that. That's what gives us our weather patterns. So what is it that we have to plow through? all these particles. We're spinning, we're moving forward, we're trailing like this, we're spinning on our axis, we're being ripped through the arm of the Milky Way, and every particle that's out here that's semi-glued to the Earth, which is our atmosphere, is, is scrubbing the particles that are in outer space. Now, they don't just go trailing off and go flying off, like you'll see in their little diagram of how the, the thing works. It doesn't work that way. These particles once they're part of the Earth's atmosphere, they stay here. 
they circle around, they come right back up in through the magnetic field. Let me just show you that and then we'll go look at the claims that they're making. Now, I am probably one of the last material scientists there are. Everybody else is theoretical. Oh, we know this, we know that, we know oh, that's been proven. No, nothing's been proven. This is the magnetic fields that we see. We know, we, we, we see them all the time. Well, these are real ones. And this is a planet, and I think it might be Venus, I'm not sure. But it's a very energetic planet. And it has a very strong magnetic field. But the particles don't leave and go flying off into space like I showed you the sun. They go and they wrap right around and they come back in. So it's holding this in a, a magnetic grip. All right, this is, this is nothing more than a magnetic grip of these particles. They don't go flying off into space like they think. Okay, so don't forget, here we are, National Center for Atmospheric Research. And we're going to go and look at this information that they have about how energy interacts and the delicate balance. Now, do they understand it? I don't think so. Let you take and see what you think after I've shown you what I just showed you is the same for both. But what happens to that incoming energy is very different. There's a lot of factors that affect that energy here on Earth, but the biggest contributor to our comfy climate is the atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere reflects almost one-fourth of the incoming solar radiation right back out to space. I'm not going to disagree with that. However, when it re-radiates it out, it still has caused an a concussion here, which is push to shove, which causes an energetic increase in, in temperature. But it does absorb some of it, which is then re-radiated either out into space or back down to the Earth's surface as heat. The atmosphere also absorbs energy that comes up from the Earth's surface through things like evaporation and the Earth's re-radiation of, that fancy scientific term again, thermal infrared radiation. Certain gases in the atmosphere called greenhouse gases. All right, here's where they are, are totally wrong. They say, well, you got greenhouse gases, you got carbon dioxide and carbon and all this stuff out there, and they just grab a hold of those heat molecules and they just won't let them go. Well, there's some tiny little bit of truth to that. However, it's the magnetic field that holds them in and it's the scrub against the other particles that are out there. You're never going to get them to just leave. They're being pushed back down. Are really good at absorbing thermal infrared radiation coming up from the Earth's surface. When the gases absorb energy, their temperature rises and they radiate heat out in all directions, including down to the Earth's surface. They pretty much radiate it down because it's being scrubbed and it's just like you scrubbing your hands together you can feel a temperature it this is just continuous scrubbing in one direction and it doesn't let it go it's scrubbing it back down co2 is a greenhouse gas even without people there was co2 in the atmosphere the more CO2 we put into the atmosphere, it warms. Then what happens there is that there's more evaporation. And there's more All right, here's what really happens. As you put more CO2, the gas expands, and now you've got a huge envelope. Now you've got turmoil. You've got tornadoes and hurricanes and crushed atmosphere. It's just blowing up like a hard balloon now. Before, it was kind of soft and mushy, and we'd get, you know, nice wind flows and stuff around the Earth. But now it's getting way out, and it's getting hard. And it's tearing the hell out of the, out of the atmosphere. And they don't understand this. There's more water vapor in the air. And so then water vapor, being another very effective greenhouse gas, absorbs the energy. And so that leads to further warming. If the energy coming in from the sun doesn't equal the energy going out into space, it means the planet is either warming or cooling. This, that's also wrong. The sunlight that comes into the Earth in the form of electrons is literally eaten by plant life. It needs these electrons, but we are so, we've, we've forced the gases to interact so violently now that this is where the interaction is out here, and it's absolutely devastating to the planet. What happens is that wherever water rises and is 
because it's going to it's going to evaporate more quickly and it's going to rise in certain more areas quicker than it did before but then it's going to compress quicker and then you're going to have huge torrential floods in areas and nowhere and then it's gone so now in the other areas where they need the rain it's gone it's not, it's not there anymore it already condensed and there's a lot going on on earth that affects the energy input and output it's complex but if we take a few pieces of it at a time it might make more sense. A small portion of the incoming radiation from the sun is reflected right back out into space by the Earth's surface. The amount of energy reflected back depends on the albedo, or reflectivity, of the surface. Lighter colored surfaces reflect more than darker surfaces. One of the most reflective surfaces on Earth is ice. When you have a lot of sea ice, you raise the albedo, so the sort of bright ice discounts the dark ocean, so you get a cooling effect from that. But I've heard that sea ice in places like the Arctic is melting because the Earth is warming. This must lower the Earth's albedo. That's true. So the Earth will warm up even more, and we're changing albedo in other ways. Let me tell you something. What's happening right now, all over the Earth, there's fires are burning everywhere. That is expanding the gases. So now instead of being here, they're out here. Scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Tons of extra scrub. And, again, the particles don't leave, they wrap around and come back into the earth. The urban heat island effect is a phenomenon that we see where urban environments have a tendency to be warmer than surrounding rural environments because urban spaces typically have darker surfaces such as pavement and so they absorb a lot of incoming radiation. One of the ways that we can make urban environments less warm is by painting every surface white. That would reflect more incoming radiation. Another way would be having a lot more green roofs. And while some of the things that affect Earth's energy balance are out of our control, some of the variables we can control. What? This is the problem. I've been talking about electron flood theory right there which I showed and I, there is nobody that can stand in front of me and say that I'm wrong. And they refuse to because they know I'm right. And if I am right, and we can get a huge amount of energy return from the muon electron neutrino division, which we should be. They're talking 33 times. I'm talking thousands of times. If you look up electron volts for laser light, you're up in the megavolts, you know, a million electron volts. When you look up what happens with the muons and electron neutrinos, you're into trillions. So if we can go from millions to trillions, that's a hell of a lot of increase. And the stuff is on the shelf. If it works, and that's a big if, but we would know within 30 days if this is going to work, and within 90 days we could be powering our cars, our houses, anything that's electric. And instead, we're walking around in circles and b refusing to talk to me, who the has the temperature do you want to live in? How yeah. hot is too hot? Yeah, it's pretty damn hot right now, my friend.